Hey everyone, it's Conrad Bobilak, CEO of Investors Farm Real Estate and author of Australian Property Finds Made Simple. And I've made this video for you this week talking about specifically, is it still possible to break into the Melbourne property market if my maximum borrowing capacity is only 500,000? It's a very good question. I've been asked that question a lot last year, especially from younger property investors who've only been in the workplace for a few years, they've saved a bit of a deposit or maybe their parents have come to the party giving them a bit of equity, and now the maximum borrowing capacity is 500. Can you still buy something in Melbourne for 500,000, or is that, has that ship sailed, and you know that's just wishful thinking from 10 years ago? Well, let me talk about Melbourne a little bit, and let me give you some options, because I believe you can still get into Melbourne for $500,000, and not only that, I'm gonna show you specific examples where you can buy properties for $500,000. And I've been spending a lot of time sourcing properties in Melbourne, myself for clients. And look, an average good good townhouse in Melbourne, a three bedroom townhouse is 1.1 to 1.5 million. A two bedroom townhouse, like an average one, I'm talking about Box Hill, Bentley, good areas, okay, not Brighton or Turex. A good two better is 800,850. You know, like your Brunswick's, your Williamstown, your uh, Bentley's, your Hampton, um, you know, areas like that. So, so the reality is, you know, for most people, what do you get for 500,000? I mean, even Clayton, which used to be the us end of Melbourne, is now 800,000 to a million for a three bedroom townhouse. So let me show you some of, some of the areas that I think still represent good value for 500,000, where you're gonna get good capital growth and it's a good way to get into the market. Bit of a personal disclaimer, I'm not here to in insult your intelligence and tell you you can become a multimillionaire by following this information. Just like a gym membership, guys, there's no guarantees you're gonna get results. You have to go to the gym, lift, do the heavy lifting, take your supplements, and do it over an extended period of time. It's the same with property investing. The only person that's gonna make you wealthy is you, yourself. No one else is gonna do it for you. Why should you listen to me? If you haven't heard my story before, I'm a real estate agent in Melbourne. I own a company called Investors Prime Real Estate in St Kilda, and I source properties predominantly for investors in the Bayside area and the eastern suburbs. I'm a mortgage broker originally, and I've got a diploma in financial planning. So I've already got a very structured kind of conservative background. But the most important thing about me is I'm a proper investor. I'm very passionate about investing in property, and I've built a large multi-million dollar property portfolio right here in Melbourne over the last 20 years. So I've done that myself, and I, I walk the talk, so to speak. I'm not a theorist or, or an academic teaching about this stuff. Also, for those who are interested, my book is out. It's called Australian Property Finds Made Simple. You can buy a copy at bookonfinance.com.au or Amazon or any good bookshop around Australia. Now, Melbourne and Sydney have outperformed everyone's expectations over the last five and 10 years. But over the last five years, I mean, no one knew this was gonna happen in Melbourne and Sydney. If they did, they're lying because I was listening to all the experts. No one knew that Melbourne and Sydney would do what they did. And the reality is, if you look at Melbourne and Sydney, 10 years to January 2018, Melbourne has appreciated by 72%, Sydney by 80%. But you know, Melbourne is 390 suburbs. Melbourne is St. Albans and Turak. There is no such thing as Melbourne anymore or Sydney. Melbourne has eight distinctive markets now. It's extremely fragmented as a, as a city with no correlation between areas. There's a massive gap that's widening between the have and the have not suburbs. There are suburbs in Melbourne where you need $3 million, like Glenaris, Q, Canterbury, Camberwell, and there are still suburbs you can get in for $600,000, and the gaps are widening between them. You know, So the reality is there's no such thing as the Melbourne property market anymore. The interesting thing about in Melbourne is that land has done really well as well. If you look at the, this table, it shows you land block appreciation from 2009. Land has gone up in value a lot in Melbourne, but what's really impressive is the blue chip areas. If you look at 2006, the red areas represent million dollar properties. And you can see in the eastern suburbs, this is where really the growth has started. 2008, you know, you had more properties, more suburbs join the, the million dollar club. And sometimes it went backwards as well. 2010 picked up again, 2011. Um, you can see the red suburbs, more red suburbs in Melbourne joining the million dollar uh, medium price club and 2013, 2014, okay? It's predominantly the eastern suburbs and the Bayside. 2015, 2016, I mean, it's pretty much all over. And 2017, 
I mean, it's virtually all of Melbourne. I mean, there's nothing left now, you know? So a million bucks is really, and a million dollars doesn't buy you anything in Melbourne. We're talking about, you know, the median price of a suburb. A good suburb in Melbourne, you need really, um, you know, two million dollars to buy an average house. And, and just a nothing house is two million bucks. Uh, 10 years ago, a million was something to aspire to. Now it's two million is an average price. You know, now three million is an aspirational house that can be, that, that there's a trophy home. Forget about two million, a million is nothing. A million is not even land. <laughs> land now is 1.5, you know. Um, that's the reality, you know. And by the way, I haven't made up these prices. Uh, this is the reality of the market. Um, so don't shoot the messenger. So where can you invest 500,000? Can you even do it in Melbourne or should we go regional? Well, I'll give you some options. You can buy, and I'll give you, I've chosen three out of one each. So I've chosen a house land package, a townhouse and an apartment. If I had to buy, if I was forced at gunpoint to buy a house and land estate in Melbourne, I would probably be buying the closest I can get to the city in an infill area, which means there's limited stock and it's surrounded by established suburbs. And the best example of that is West Meadows, which is Valley Park Estate. It's only 17 k's from the city. 17 k's from the city of Melbourne, and it's 495,000. It starts from 305,000 for one bedroom townhouse, up to 610,000 for a four bedroom detached house. A townhouse in Glenroy, Glenroy was an average to bad area 10 years ago, a lot of crime, nothing going for it. Still close to the city, 13 case from the city. You can pick up townhouses now in Glenroy for 475,000. Not bad. If I had to do an apartment, apartments are really, like there's a lot of danger with apartments in Melbourne. The Melbourne market is oversaturated with apartments, even in the best areas. If I had to buy a two bedroom apartment, under 500,000, I would go Bentley, 495,000, and I would buy a two bedroom with a large courtyard, preferably on the ground floor, in a boutique small development of 12, 15, maximum 20 apartments, no more. So low density boutique, Bentley around Centre Road, around uh, the shopping precinct in Bentley, in the McKinnon High Catchment area. Let's look at these ones individually. This is Valley Park Estate in West Meadows, okay, which is bordering on areas like Broad Meadows. Now, Broad Meadows is one of the worst suburbs in Melbourne, but it's done really well in the last five years. See, at the peak of the property cycle, when all the suburbs have boomed, the last remaining bad suburbs gets dragged up at the end. So your Frankston North, your Heidelberg Heights, you know, your Broad Meadows, St Albans, all of them come up at the very end. We're in 11 o'clock on the property clock. That's when those suburbs come up in, 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 in price because the gap just widens between them and all the other suburbs so much. And this is an infill area. It's never been developed. It's actually just parkland that's been rezoned residential, and you can buy townhouses and houses in, in Valley Park Estate. It's a great builder, and, and these start off at $305,000 for, for a one bedroom townhouse. You heard me correct, it's a one bedroom townhouse, which means it's a normal kitchen, dining, meals area, normal bathroom, except it's got one bedroom, okay? Um, <clears throat> it's a really good development. I'm really excited about it. You know, you can buy a three bedroom house as well and a very traditional four bedroom house as well in the estate from $600,000. Um, so there's plenty of stock there. The good thing about it is, is that the area is an infill area, which means it's surrounded by established suburbs. And there's only about 280 dwellings before the whole area is overdeveloped. So it's a limited stock in that suburb. And once it's developed, it, it's gone. You won't be able to get any more stock, <clears throat> which means it has a scarcity factor. So once again, it's 495,000. Combination of one, two, three, and four bedroom townhouses and detached houses. Starting from 305,000, I mean, it's ridiculous, up to 610,000 for a four bedroom, two bathroom, two car garage, detached house. It should be 2.5 bathrooms there, I apologize. Close to the city, 17 Ks, guys. That's not, a, that's not long, that's not 20 or, or, or 30 k's or 50 k's, you're like, like packing them in barracks. 17 k's is actually quite a good distance. Um, and there's only 280 dwellings and they are selling really fast and a lot of owner occupiers are buying these. By the way, if you want to secure one of these properties, email me directly, get in contact with me and I can reserve a property for you before they sell out. By the way, I'm a real estate agent, that's all I do all day is sell property and match really good properties to investors. So once again, for Melbourne, this is the closest estate you can get to the city um, for, for, the, for this price, under 500,000. There is nothing else you can get for this price 
And I challenge anyone out there to find something cheaper close to the city of Melbourne than 305000 up to 610 for a four-bedroom house. It just doesn't exist. I've done the research. Glenroy townhouses, you know, you can pick up these under 500000 This is an example of one. And they look, they're really good. I mean, in terms of the bill itself, very contemporary um, design, um, good-sized properties. You're looking at between 472500 to 495 And these are two-bedroom, two-bathrooms, sometimes 1.5 bathroom, one-car garage. Some have a study. And overall... Um, the 13 squares to 14 squares, which is about 120 square metres to 130 square metres, with a terrace as well. That's all you need, you know. Um, it's a way to get into the market. You know, this is, think of this as your first car. You know, when you just got your learners, you're not going to buy the best car ever. You're not going to buy a BMW, uh, you know, M6 as your first car or a 911 Porsche. You're going to start off somewhere. And if you want to start off somewhere in the property market, these are the kind of properties some of you will have to buy in order to get your foot in the door. Um, so that's something like, like this. It's 13 case from the city. It's an area that used to be rough and now it's transitioning into a, a semi-trendy area. Still has a way to go, but it's getting there. Um, it's a combination. There's only 10 townhouses in this project, two bedroom, two bathroom. Some of them have a study, one car garage, 492 to 496,000. Close to schools, transport, shopping, and only 10 in the project. By the way, I have no Bentley apartments at the moment. They're all sold out, but I am getting new projects in Bentley, but I haven't got anything to show you right now. But if I had to buy an apartment in Melbourne for under 500000 it would be the Footscray or Bentley, um, two betters. I had some last year. They've all sold out. I'm waiting for new stock. But if you are interested, I can put you on the waiting list and definitely I can give, get you some options in the future. That's about it from me, guys. So just food for thought there. For those who are trying to get into the Melbourne property market, these are the kind of properties you can look at. You can look at a, um, a, you know, a property like a house and land package, if you, if you like house and land. Um, you can look at you know, a good townhouse in an area that's up and coming. Um, or you can look at a two-bedroom apartment in an area that's already really good. I mean, Bentley now is super expensive. In fact, last year there was a record broken in Bentley where a house sold for three million and sixty-five thousand dollars, which is unheard of. I mean, they're Brighton East Brighton prices, but that's sold in Bentley, in the best part of Bentley, off Centre Road. So, you know, Bentley is really up and coming. Uh, it's a great area. Um, but by the way, all these options are very good. They're all valid. And the most important thing is. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's a way to get into the market, you know? Get your foot in the market, get that equity growing for you, and then capitalize on that opportunity and buy more properties. And never stop buying, guys. This whole game is buy and hold, never sell. Accumulate, and you'll be thankful for that process looking back 10 years when you're drawing equity out, going on the holidays, buying more properties, buying more cars. So once again, these are the projects that I have shortlisted for this video and I stand behind them and I think they're really good opportunities for people trying to get into the market. If you're interested in learning more, I encourage you guys, by the way, to spend two days with myself and other speakers at the up and coming real estate investing fast track weekend. If you want to have tickets, seats are strictly limited to 40 people and we run these events right here in our head office in St Kilda. We have a seminar room right next door for 50 people and literally I do about 10 of these a year. They book out really fast. In fact, the one we had in January, we had 118 people book in and we only had 40 seats. So we had to push people into February. And so we have a waiting list almost for these events. So if you can get in, get into these events. They're free. There's nothing you can buy at the events, nothing you can sign. It's pure education and contents. Um, there are a number of speakers, including Stephen McClatchy, myself, Cameron Fisher from Changing Places Real Estate, and other speakers from time to time. So it's a great event to book yourself into and learn some information about how you can build, structure, and automate a large property portfolio from scratch, and how you can use money from that property portfolio to replace your income and create financial independence and abundance in your life that you truly deserve. Day one is pure education on finance, due diligence and research. Day two, we take you out of the classroom environment, stick you on the bus. And this is why it's only 40 people, guys. The bus only has 48 seats. And I've got staff as well coming. Um, and we take you around Melbourne, show you the best suburbs to invest in and areas to avoid. Uh, so if you're interested in that, just register. Scroll down below, click on the link, and you end up on the, on the actual registration page. Also, if you want my book, 
bookonfinance.com.au or amazon.com.au or any good bookshop around Australia. If they haven't got my book in the bookshop, ask for it and order it in, okay? They should have it. Um, as I mentioned before at the beginning of the video, um, this is my special gift to you. It's a bonus valued at $497, which is a recording of the Real Estate Investing Fast Track Weekend from three years ago, nearly four now. And yes, the market has moved since, and APRA has introduced a whole range of new policies in lending, and a bunch of stuff has changed, but fundamentally nothing's changed. You know, it's pretty much 80% still current. So for those who are interested in, in educating themselves, there's 10 hours of content there, plus a 265-page manual. Uh, super friendly to use. You register, once you register, this is the page that comes up. You click on the video and download the manual. I mean, there's nothing to do. It's super easy to, 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 to use. It's absolutely free and you can get instant access right now by scrolling below um, and you get a 265 page manual with that as well. So you can follow all the PowerPoint slides. And it is me guys, by the way, without the beard, okay? Don't ask me when it was filmed. It was filmed four years ago. <laughs> Um, thank you very much. You've been an amazing audience. Stay tuned in for future videos on YouTube. This is Conrad Bobby Lake signing out. I'll see you on the inside.